Uh, my name is Arpas Turan. I am from Cleveland Clinic. I will be presenting the results of metoprednisolone after cardiac surgery and its effect on persistent surgical pain. Uh, cardiac surgery is very common. There is around 400,000 cardiac surgeries done only in the US. The prevalence of persistent pain after cardiac surgery is ranges between 7 to 60%. There is no consensus on it, but we know that it's a pretty common problem and a lot of patients are suffering from this. And furthermore, it's affecting daily lives of our patients. The mechanisms for persistent surgical pain are not clear, but one is for sure that acute postoperative pain, uncontrolled acute postoperative pain, is a very important factor. Inflammation seems to play an important role, and we think that inflammation is another uh, factor that initiates and furthermore uh, continues to uh, maintain the persistent pain. Uh, steroids have been effective in acute, acute postoperative pain. They have been shown to decrease pain and uh, decrease opioid consumption. Furthermore, steroids have been shown to decrease inflammation so after surgery as well. So basically we have hypothesized that uh, the patients randomized to metoprednisolone will have less incisional pain than patients who are given placebo at six months. And our second hypothesis were smokers have more persistent incisional pain than non-smokers. And furthermore, we look at some other potential risk factors that were associated with persistent surgical pain. So this was a sub-study of steroids in cardiac surgery trial, which was recently published in Lancet. Uh, patients who were having cardiac surgery with at least a euro score of six and above were included. The patients had to go through the bypass. The patients who were excluded had to have some kind of uh, systemic steroids. If they had any kind of bacterial or fungal infection in the last 30 days or any kind of allergy or intolerance to the steroids were excluded. A total of 500 milligrams of metoprednisolone was given. 250 milligrams of it was given at anesthetic induction and the remaining was at cardiopulmonary bypass initiation. A comparable placebo was also given. The follow-ups were done at 30 days and 6 months by blinded investigators. We used the 11-point Likert verbal response scale, a modified brief pain inventory, and neuropathic pain questionnaire short form to evaluate persistent pain. We included approximately uh, 1,110 patients to the study. However, there were few lost to follow up and there were few patients who did not receive the allocated interventions. So, and some patients uh, were unfortunately died through the follow up. So we analyzed 508 metoprednisolone patients and 515 uh, placebo patients. The patient characteristics were very similar. There was no difference in age, gender, smoking status, or baseline chronic pain syndromes. Independent of the group allocation, the patients had almost 16% of incisional pain at six months. The average pain intensity was 1.4 with a standard deviation of 1.6, and the worst pain intensity was 2.6 with a standard deviation of 2.3. Approximately 40% of these patients who had pain were still using analgesic medications after six months. Uh, we will first look at the persistent incisional pain at 30 days. Uh, when we, there was no difference between metoprednisolone and placebo for sure. The incidence was around 50%. Half of the patients had still pain on their incisional side. The overall modified pain infantry was 20.3 compared to 19.5 with placebo. Average pain in 24 hours was 2.4 in metoprednisolone group and 2.3 in placebo group. And again, there was no difference. The worst pain in the last 24 hours was 4.1 in metoprednisolone group and 4.3 in placebo. And there was no difference again. Uh, when we look at the pain interference with daily life, metoprednisolone was 10.7 and placebo was 9.9. .9. There was no difference again. The current usage of pain medication of all the patients was, again, 40% to 37%, and this was not significant. Neuropathic ward pain was seen around 5 to 5% 5 of the patients. 
When we look at the primary outcome, six uh, pain at six months, uh, incisional pain was seen in again 15.7% of the patients in methylprednisolone and 17.8% of the patients in placebo group, and there was overall no difference between the groups. The average pain scores had decreased compared to 30 days, and it was 1.4 in methylprednisolone group and 1.4 again in placebo group. The worst pain was 2.6 and 2.5 in six uh, pain medications, and the methylprednisolone group was using 47, and placebo group was using 30% uh, pain medication. Smoking status did not significantly affect the incisional pain at six months to our surprise however we found out that younger age female gender and deep surgical side infections were associated with uh, persistent surgical pain at six months bmi and chronic pain symptoms were not related to persistent surgical pain so as a conclusion we can say that methylprednisolone in cardiac surgery does not reduce persistent surgical pain at 30 days and 6 months. It does not reduce intensity of pain. It does not reduce neuropathic pain. And smoking status does not have an effect on persistent pain after cardiac surgery. Thank you. I don't know, it might be too long. <laughs>